Okay, welcome back. So this is uh, the second half of my one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation with Rajendra. Rajendra, again, thanks for your time. So in the first half, we talked about uh, sort of your early days when you were getting started about 12 months ago as a contributor and how you sort of got up the hump uh, of learning not just the, the, the technology or the product, but also sort of the process and, and getting to know uh, the community members, both GitLab team members and from the wider community. And now in this part, I want to talk about sort of, you know, after several months of doing this, obviously you got, you got better contributing, you got to know more people. Uh, so, you know, talk about your experience as a more like experienced contributor uh, over the past several months. I mean, the first question, I mean, this is something that I, I'm very curious about. Obviously you have a full-time job uh, as a lot of our other uh, community members do. Uh, so how do you sort of balance your life? I mean, you have a lot of interests, like you, we talked about in the early recording, you, you like to travel. I mean, you have other hobbies, which is, which is great. But so how do you sort of, you know, have the discipline to sort of balance, uh, you know, your, your day job, your, your life, and also finding time to contribute to GitLab? So what's, what, what are some of the things that, that, that you do to sort of find the balance in life? Yeah, so uh, I have set my work hours like fixed in a day from 9 30 a.m. to 5 30 p.m. So that's okay, around 8 and 9, 8 and a half mm -hmm. hours of work. Day. But after that, it's my time and I completely use it to you know, contribute to GitLab. Uh, I was like a uh, lot of time with advice that I would burn out, but trust me when I say this, like contributing to GitLab is not the same as you know, contributing to any open source project or that I've done in the past. So this is there's something about the code, something about you know, learning new stuff when you contribute. At every month, that is helping you get more energy to you know go on and on. So, so maybe like we call me spiritual or something, but contributing to GitLab is much more than the gifts that you send me or getting paid to do it or anything else. So, I just, I just, I just love it. Like there are no other thoughts about you know not contributing to GitLab. This, this is what I want to do and this is what I do. So it's it's sort of uh, I don't mind spending my weekends contributing to GitLab. And learning is an add-on, right? So it's it's not like I do not take breaks. I do take breaks. I skip a couple of Sundays sometimes, you know, some, uh, or sometimes there are no code, code contributions, but you just reply on the comments or ask for help and wait for help right. around that. And uh, yeah, other than that, like I don't have any responsibilities at home as such. So it's work and it's like contribution for me. So during the weekends, it's like after breakfast, I get a couple of hours. Then I take some time off in the afternoon, you know, during which you. Uh, during which, uh, as you mentioned, like, I have some hobbies and stuff. Yeah, that's the time when I pursue them. And in the evening, I get back around for three, four hours and until like all the day. So this is two days every week. And during the weekdays after office hours, I get usually like two, two and a half hours before I go to sleep. And yeah, when I travel, I completely switch off my emails and everything. I don't carry my laptop with me, so yeah, it's completely cut off during vacation. Yeah. So, I mean, you seem like pretty disciplined in terms of like carving out specific times for, I mean, I think carving out time for work is, is pretty easy because you go to work, but even outside of work, you sort of have set schedule either like a, in the evening time frame or like, you know, carve out some time in on, on weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, I, I applaud you for that. I mean, that discipline is, is probably what's sort of keeping, keeping you, keeping you sane. Uh, and then, and then also making time for your, your hobbies too. So that, that's great. Yeah, so I, I, mean, I think, yeah. yeah. And in this point of career, yeah. like, I don't have any responsibilities of, you know, at home or something. So I'm totally focused on learning and whatever it takes to learn new stuff, get mm -hmm. good at what I do. I, right. I, I yeah. Engineering profession. So I do whatever right. it takes to be good in this point of career. So, you know, the rest of the career, like in my late thirties or late forties, I'm not you know, sort of old school or something like that, not upgrading to the new technologies. So open source contributions are a good way to go. And GitLab specifically has been helping me in learning new stuff. It's not the typical data that you see, it's properly well-structured code, well-architected right. code, and a lot of documentation and help. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, like you, like you said in, in the first part of the, the previous recording, you said your, your approach is almost like a career development, um, uh, opportunity or I mean or advancing your skill so I think you you approach it that way you're you're sort of dedicating time uh, to do you know professional or personal development so yeah, I mean that's a uh, I think 
I guess that's sort of, you know, a good way to sort of prioritize, like, you know, carving out time to, to do contributions or, or sort of develop yourself professionally. So, cool. And yeah, it's, it's not really the case. Like, uh, whatever I've learned till now, you know, writing about good aspects, having good aspects in the code, I've been using it at work and the results have been phenomenal as well. So, cool. whenever I, so, you know, someone in the team at work asks me, like, uh, where did you see this way of doing this for your stuff? I said, right. lab. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah. So cool. Like, they're like, <laughs> they're... oh, really nice. So, I, yeah. I, I, I feel uh, like really proud to say this, but there are two, team, two people in my team who have been like motivated to contribute. And one of them is in constantly touch with me on, on mm -hmm. internal communication channel. Uh, mm -hmm. He's asking me, like, I want to contribute to GitLab. So, what should I do? So, yeah, that's right. like, I'm cool. Okay. Oh. Well, I mean, I'm happy to hear that your contribution is also helping uh, contribute to being more productive and 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 helping helping with your your day job as well. That's great. Cool. Uh, so we also, I mean, we kind of talked about this briefly in 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 the first part of the recording. Uh, you know, you know, I think one of the things I'm I'm really impressed with uh, is a lot of our reviewers are maintainers. So they're very thorough, and then uh, they're and they provide a lot of guidance to to whether it's a fellow team member or from a wider community member. Whether there's an MR, I see a lot of good interaction that's that's happening. Uh, a lot of discussions and, and 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 a lot of information sharing and guidance. Um, so, so what type, types of reviews have you found like helpful? I mean, if you have examples of that, I mean, feel free to feel free to share that or, or talk about that. I think uh, that will be helpful, especially for our like a team members, because uh, it'll help sort of uh, provide better review experience for for other wider community members. Yeah, sure. So just let me quickly share my screen. Yeah. I hope can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. So this is yeah. probably my first MR, I think, significant like adding an API around five months ago. This mm -hmm. is the rating around December. So this is so you know, this was the first time for me adding an API. And if you see the issue, it's about adding creating a new API to retrieve error tracking information in this for the project. So as I said, like Peter has been really helpful, you know, uh, helping me with the reviews and helping with best code practices. So, mm -hmm. so like, yeah, so this, this is the first instance where I had to add a new API, but I was really not aware of the way to add a new API, but there was enough documentation. And I think that we'll talk about the mistakes that I had, like not reading documentation well enough. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so as you can see this particular thread, like Sean really had to help me about, you know, giving the boilerplate code of how APIs okay. are handling the project. So right. this is this is the way you know you use the great great framework for adding an API and then uh, because great essentially does all the heavy lifting for you you know uh, validating puts uh, this uh, like making help making decisions on what the output should look like like you can just mm -hmm. mention the entity that you want so this entity is converted to JSON object and that's how the output is served to be using using this API so he really had to you know uh, help me with this boilerplate code and. That actually really like, I felt like, uh, wow, I mean, I mean, uh, instead of doing this, Sean would have been like, okay, I'll just do it myself. I don't want help, but that's not the case. He really went out of his way and helped me with this. And after that, I had to, you know, really check other code in, in the GitLab code base of having other APIs, like how they are done. And that's when it was clear, like, okay, so this is the way to do it. And so, yeah, you can see the comments. So he also mentioned about the API style. Right. So I had to follow this, but I was not aware of this earlier, but yeah, pointing mm -hmm. to the right direction. And then, yeah, I mean, this is how I got carried away. And then I added this particular API. Then uh, Sean did the first level of review. And then mm -hmm. we have a maintainer review. Where, right. You know, Peter helped me. So all these result threads are the, you know, help from Peter. Of how things can come better. He has made sure like adding snippets, a very detailed review sort of. It's not like this, right. you know, the, have, 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 have a statement and just tell him like, do this and do that. Right. Peter really says like, this is also a way to do. What do you think about it? 
Mm-hmm. This is, I think, good way to go about it. With with all sorts of reasons, with all sorts of you know logical logical reasoning, like why you should do this stuff the way I have mentioned here, and it really right. you know clicks with you, and you're like, oh wow, yeah, this is right. So yeah. uh, sometimes you know you know in some reviews wherein uh, there can be you know some modification to the aspects where the execution time is reduced. So Peter makes sure like run aspect the implementation that I had made. Make the changes mm-hmm. that Peter thinks would improve the performance, and then run it again. And then you know he used to sort of mention the benchmarks in terms of time required for aspect execution. Mm-hmm. So you know the contributor is really convinced. Okay, right now I see the point difference in execution. So this is the right way to go about it. And that's that's right. when you you know learn or make notes like okay, okay, so this is what has to be done. Like let's say uh, if if I if I talk in terms of technicality. There are two couple of ways of defining uh, local variables in aspect using a let mm-hmm. keyword or a member variable. So member variables are really slow in execution, but the let variables are only initialized whenever you get them up. So Peter, you know, uh, reviewer like Peter would make sure to help me understand the difference if I do using let or using a member variable. You know, really convince you. So that sort of reviews have been really helpful. One such right. example is here. So this is for your like, you can just uh, read up the review if you want. But uh, yeah, so this was about you know having the right way to add a particular API, uh, sorry, particular aspect. You know, reuse as much as code as possible so that mm-hmm. it's not duplicated and we don't have a new tech deck to resolve. So you know, this particular reviews have been really helpful for me, and I. Sometimes, like you know, make sure to have notes of these reviews so that it's not it's not stale or I don't forget them. And now every MR that I raise, I sort of you know uh, spend a few like couple of hours or maybe some time around thinking of what can be done better, what Peter would think of doing this stuff in a good way. So mm-hmm. that really helps me to you know reduce the uh, back and forth of improving in MR or improving some particular code block. And reduce the average time to merge. So this right. sort of reviews are really have been really helpful for me. And this this is the only reviews that really helped me at work as well for writing aspects that I mentioned about. Earlier. Right, right. No, I mean, so I mean, if you look at like I, I see MRs like this from I mean, uh, you know, constantly. I mean, not just from you, Rajendra, but other community members. So I'm like, I'm very impressed with a lot of the interactions that go back and forth. And it's almost like doing a code development work. It's not like, here's, here's a documentation you read and come back when you're done. It's, it's a lot of back and forth. And even, like you said, like asking your opinion uh, in terms of like different approaches. So no, no, I mean, this is really helpful. I mean, a code snippet's great, access to document, I mean, pointing up the documentation is great, but I think almost doing like a collaborative development work, I think that's, uh, uh, I mean, I think, I mean, I don't think you're the first person who sort of pointed that out. They, they feel very like, they feel like their uh, opinions like very valued and then they feel like they're doing like doing a joint development work uh, rather than just like a throwing uh, like you know, pieces of code over the wall. So cool. I mean, thanks for this ex- example. I mean, I, it's, it looks like it took uh, a few months to to get this over the uh, the finish line, but I'm sure it was it was well yeah. worth it. So cool. Yeah, so earlier, like I I had a longer time to get into the master, but it was worth it. I mean, I had to you know learn a lot of stuff about mm-hmm. making good MRs, and now it's like uh, I spend like around you know, maybe my MR is open for a day or two max if the mm-hmm. reviewer is busy or sometimes. But yeah, otherwise it's really very good to do. I make sure, like I, you know, apply my learnings and not make the same repetitive mistakes again and again. Right. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, so, and I mean, you you already sort of mentioned this. I mean, I wanted to talk ask you about, you know, what are some of the benefits of contributing to GitLab? I mean, you all you already provided an example of you gained experience with like RSpec, like a testing, for example, that you are able to apply to your to your to your work. Uh, but what are what is what are some of the things that you gain? You feel like you gain from uh, contributing to GitLab over the past twelve months or so? Uh, yeah, so you know, a really great benefit of contributing to GitLab is you learn a lot of what makes a good code base, what mm-hmm. makes a good architecture in terms of having good code structure. 
separation of concerns for each of the code. Now there are many companies, you know, I'm sure like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, you know, have good, really good architecture. But uh, like, if you're employed at the company, only then you can get get access to documentation related to it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how often you get to see those code yourself and understand them. It's either you work for them or the project is open sourced, which is the case of mm-hmm. GitLab. You know, you get to get to know a lot of stuff without actually being employed. Your code is reviewed by good developers having a lot of years of experience. Like Peter, he himself is like around 20 years of experience. Mm-hmm. That sort of validation and satisfaction, you know, comes from GitLab. When your cool. code is being merged into master and being used used by hundreds of customers, thousands of customers out there, individual developers, you yourself, when you are a user of GitLab, like the error tracking settings, I added that API in like past around four, five months back. Now, when I use that particular API, I'm like, oh yes, I added this API. Now I'm using it for myself. So that particular sort of validation is really satisfying for me. Other than that, the values of GitLab, the non-technical mm-hmm. part, the non-technical benefits, iteration and collaboration are the two particular ones that I, that I, would, be, that I would like to talk about. Like, yeah. These two values had really helped me, you know, reach my personal goal of 50 MMs. I had a plan of updating it over a year, but breaking bigger issues into multiple MRs mm-hmm. helped me increase my MR numbers. And that's the reason, like when you leave the values and collaborating with the internal team, engineers mm-hmm. at Epic Lab and the wider community. Members. Cool. So values when actually put to use, you see the result. So that's right. the sort of you know importance and the impact the values have. Right. Cool. Yeah. You know, so it's it's not just the technical aspects of of, of the product that uh, that help you, but things like you know how we typically iterate in in like a small increments. Uh, it's interesting that that's also been helpful for uh, wider community members as well. It's it's interesting. Um, so. Uh, uh, I mean, one sort of like, you know, close to wrapping up uh, our discussion here. Uh, I mean, you obviously, uh, your volume of work speaks for itself. I mean, close to 200 MRs already. Uh, we're not even like, you know, done with the first week of June. Um, if you were to like talk to people that are thinking about contributing to GitLab, I mean, what are some of the learnings that you want to share, including, you know, positive experience or even like some of the some of the mistakes that, that you you want to tell people not, not to sort of repeat. Um, yeah. So uh, one thing that I was not doing really well and which resulted in you know longer time in MR being open is not reading the reviews carefully. So uh, if you speak about for your example, the error tracking API, Sean earlier mentioned about like we use GraphQL or you can add the mm-hmm. API in and then he told me the file path where that would go. But I totally, you know, missed it and I totally ended up doing uh, opposite thing. So that's why he had to, you know, sort of provide me with the boilerplate code. So one thing that I would like to share is if you have a review on your one, make sure you read it twice, twice maybe, so that you get to know what it is because those are very detailed and very helpful and precise. So they're not like uh, shooting in the dark types, but they are very pinpoint and exactly what you need to do in your MR. So that's one thing that I would like to, uh, you know, sort of share with the other contributors, read your reviews. The other is the documentation. It's everything, whatever it is done in the GitLab code base or in the company, it's heavily documented, like handbooks, style guides, model guides and everything. So if you want to add a new API, there is an API style guide. If you want to new, add a new model, there is a model style guide. If you want to add a validator in your API or any sort of code changes, there definitely will be a uh, sort of guide available on the GitLab documentation. If there isn't, you can pinpoint that and you know there would be another open issue of adding that, that particular. So for example, the custom validators that I just spoke about, uh, it did not have any sort of uh, Guide of some if someone had to add a you know new validator. So I discovered this while working on one of the validators. Then F J San Patu, I think I now I know people with their uh, GitLab mention names. <laughs> right, not the real names, right? Yeah. So uh, he opened a new issue of adding this custom validator guide. So I have an MR around that as well. And it's most yeah. If you if you now go to the API style guide, there is a section of you know adding a new custom validator. And that was added by me as a result of not finding it for my 
you know other issue so second point as discussed it's read the documentation thoroughly if you want to make a code change or anything so, so yeah read documentation like it's really extensive and very very helpful and even after reading all this stuff if you still need help then yeah as you said in the earlier part like you can comment on the issue comment on the mr or reach out to other community contributors on the channels cool no no i mean uh i mean the example you provided i mean with the mrs uh that when you screen shared i mean the the discussions could get quite lengthy i mean you're being modest here rajendra i mean it's easy to sort of miss things because it, it gets like really long and yeah. then you can't keep track of all the details there there are like 70 discussion points like in the mr that you showed so i mean it happens to everybody uh and then uh the all, uh, the other thing i want to mention is you know i like we may be making certain assumptions we when we provide feedback that something is like obvious if it's not then i wouldn't feel bad about like like rajender like you said just i mean reask the question like well that's still not clear to me that's perfectly acceptable um so yeah i mean i i i think i made this point in the previous video as well don't be shy about reasking the question and and then yeah i mean once you st start to parse through all the feedback in your mrs I mean, if it gets long it's okay you you sometimes you miss stuff it happens to uh, it happens to even the very i mean most experienced like the contributors so i, I wouldn't feel bad about that so yeah. Um, so cool. Um, yeah, I mean, Rajendra, I, I really appreciate your time. I really not only appreciate your contributions uh, with your MRs, but you're very active in Gitter channel, helping out other contributors and uh, been wanting to sort of schedule this for, for a while. Uh, so it, I thought it'd be very helpful to sort of share your experience with uh, with other uh, uh, contributors that are that are uh, potential contributors or people that are just getting started, so so thank you and uh, hope you have a good day over there in in India. So. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, cool. thanks, thanks, thanks yeah. for doing this. I hope oh, you bet. for all the contributors, yeah. contributors out right. there, ones who wanting to start. And I'm sure the experienced contributors like you, Ticket, they are really yeah. really doing cool. good what they're doing. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for cool. doing this. All right, thanks. All right.